What is going on, everybody? Welcome to much anticipated, I presume. <laughs> I don't know. Normally, they are a Civilization V AI only battle on a world map for the first time in a, since the community one, I think. It was the last one. There's teams, there's also the Battle Royale mod. We don't have the full 60 civs because I couldn't think of that many teams. I wanted to try to keep it balanced, and then not all the mods worked. I wanted to stick with mods that I knew so they didn't break as well because that's been an issue before. So yeah, there's something like 50 sieves. I think it's a bit more, it's like 56 maybe. Which Okay, when you think about it, that's pretty close to 60. But some of the teams didn't work, so I don't remember the exact number. There was a po Some of the mods just have stopped working. I mean, Mississippi didn't work, and they were going to be with Texas, and I couldn't think of a new partner. So I thought I'd just give more space to the Aztecs and the Mayans, which actually works out. Because Argentina and Chile both no longer work. So Brazil and the Inca pretty free but yeah there is a lot of teams i will go through them all um just make it pretty clear in your comment like both sieves on the team when you pick a winner just in case like one of the members of the team dies and the other one still wins which could happen because then i might not i might forget at the end by accident so yeah just bear that in mind but yeah brazil and the inca are a team in south america and yeah the team setting is on team number they're not numbered but they are numbered but they're very complicated to remember the Aztecs and the Mayans are a team. California and the Chinook are a team, a little bit further apart. Shoshone and the Sioux, Iroquois in America. Over to Europe, we have Spain and France. And also is the map where it's all distorted. I like this map more. We have England and the Celts. The island sieves have all got extra techs. And I think Korea does as well, because they're on a team with Japan. And the teams share technologies. So the bigger sieves, or the sieves on the mainland got their got the benefits too uh, we have roman greece austria and germany poland and russia khazar and the huns assyria and arabia persia india let's do africa and then we'll go to asia egypt and mercuria carthage morocco songhai nigeria congo burundi ethiopia and kilwa because I don't know, I, I made a last minute decision to put Kilwa in because they were very popular last time and I didn't realise they spawned this far down. But yeah, they're an East Coast team and Burundi's meant to be like a sort of central team. That's sort of the idea there. And obviously Rhodesia and the Zulu at the bottom. Very scary team, that one. <laughs> Two of the most powerful civs put together. What can go wrong? Vietnam and the Siam right next to each other. We've got China and Mongolia who have a fair amount of space but there's three sieves here to try and deny them and obviously the mountains and korea is then with japan and they have those benefits as i spoke they've got the next or well, they're all it's immortal so they've got the first four technologies everyone and then the next three techs to do with like the sea and sailing are what the island sieves have indonesia and samoa i would have moved samoa like i normally do but we saw them get this island to 50 population last time we used them. So I thought, you know, they don't need my help. But they've still got the tech benefits. And then Australia and New Zealand. So yeah, it's not meant to be like a historic teams thing. They're just the sieves that are next to each other. I think I missed out Ottomans and Byzantium. They're here as well, if I didn't say them. Um, so pick your team. Pick one team to win. And you'll get a shout out if you get it right. If This is going to be the hardest one to get. Actually, it's not. Because there's not as many teams. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm going for these two, which is why it's probably good that I left them out. Actually, why am I saying this? It's the start, George. They could be dead at the end of this episode. Shush. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make my pick just yet. But I really fancy, don't fancy these two to win. But I would like, it'd be cool if these two won. I don't know why. It just would be to see them working in unison. Um, so hopefully it doesn't go too slowly. That is at least early on. I don't know what I'm gonna do later on when it gets really slow. I might go back to the highlights idea that I used to do. But yeah, we'll just kick it off, see where everyone I was gonna say see where everyone settles. No one's got two settlers, so it doesn't matter too much just yet. One thing is I, we're gonna have to have a more definitive definition of winner. And I don't know how that's gonna work because the info addict mod does not work with this mod. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> I'll probably, like, pick the top five and let you vote or something. Although there's always a bit of bias then. I don't know. If I pick the top five, maybe it's a bit fairer. I'll figure it out. Uh, Immortal Difficulty. Aggressive and Expansive AI. Is the main mod. I think the rest are just sieves. 
yet not another earth map pack if you're wondering how to do this yourself there's also a tutorial on my channel on how to set up an air only battle if you don't know finally quick combat and everything to speed it up no city raising no barbarians no ancient ruins domination only there we go so yeah we did try with massive teams before i think i had three or four teams and there was like two sieves on each continent in each team and there was like 10 sieves per team but they just like built it was really weird some of the ai didn't even do anything like they didn't move from the start of the game <laughs> so um yeah we're trying it with smaller teams i think this should work a little better obviously it doesn't seem like the most interesting idea having them right next to each other Hopefully they work together and we get just sort of a cool mix of sieves doing different things. It's kind of the aim here. And yeah, I'm just going to sort of stare here because it's like the most concentrated area of sieves. We'll have a look a bit more around the map as things go down. The Celts already with a Pantheon. So you might get different sieves focusing different things in the teams. It's like the Celts might go all out religion while Great Britain, it's not, it is Great Britain. I put the mod on instead of England. Sometimes it's a bit better with the Britain mod. Um, Sometimes you might see England maybe going down the science route and the Celts doing all the religious work, you don't know. That's how it could work. But yeah, some sieves are in really good positions if they can get good starts. Particularly, um, or not so much in good positions, it's just some teams aren't in good positions. So Greece and Rome are quite far apart. Spain and France, Germany all have a lot of space, so this is going to be a bit of a land grab but yeah there's definitely some more congested areas but that always happens you know anything possible thought Assyria had settled but no they just grabbed a new tile we'll see how these all work out also I had to move the Khazar so if they act a bit weird at the start it's because I had to move some of their units sometimes that throws the AI a little bit and I'm at war with them and the Huns for the entire rest of the game always a good start I think I did find a new way of doing it I can't remember but and or you guys always tell me there is a different way, but it doesn't matter. When it's in this mode, it's fine for me just to declare war on them. Mercuria with desert folklore. I mean, that's gonna be pretty useful for them, being you know in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> pretty useful. Let's see, no second cities just yet. By the look of it, I'm just trying to keep my eyes open. I don't think. I was going to say, the only sieve I wouldn't really be able to notice is Samoa, but I don't think they're not going to be able to get off the island straight away because of the deep sea. I think that's the next level of tech for them, so that's still not going to be available. But yeah, they'll be able to move to nearby islands, which at least for their team will give Indonesia a really good chance in particular. And obviously people like Japan, similar chance. It's probably good Korea get the bonuses too, because China and Mongolia is one of those teams you just know very capable especially when they're not busy taking each other out if china focuses south china and mongolia goes west that is a scary prospect right there uh, vietnam and siam have got they've got some of the teams have to work together be really smart these are one of them obviously we know vietnam are pretty capable so i'm sure it won't be an issue and it'd be nice to see siam do well for once for once I kind of want to see a good Arabia, Assyria team. We don't normally see, see, see sieves do too well from this region. There's no Babylon to get in their way. So hopefully they can do a little bit better than normal. And at least control this whole region, if nothing else. Greece, not off to too much of a start. That could be in Germany and Austria. That would be great to see them perform well. They're not the greatest, you know, track records there for AI-only battles. Particularly, Germany did well in one. But then I think England and Poland teamed up on them. That was a long time. I'm trying to... I don't even know what these battles are now. I just know that they happened. Yeah, Poland. That's the strongest I think we've ever seen Germany. I've included Austria a few times, but I don't think they've ever really performed. And also, sorry. I know someone wanted to check a Slovakia mod. I can actually find one. So that might just be me not searching hard enough. But also, I've never used one before. So I didn't want to throw it into a battle like this one. Where I really don't want any of the mods to break, <laughs> preferably. That'd be nice. No one with a second city yet. We'll see. They've kind of got two because I think the team sort of operates as one sieve controlling, uh, one like AI controlling two. I don't think they're too autonomous. I don't know how it works because you could obviously you could put an AI on your team. And that'd be a really interesting concept. 
for a let's play. But I don't know if you get to control just everyone on your team and then it becomes a mess. But it'd be pretty cool if you had an AI teammate to try and work with. Just imagining how painful that would be. Maybe no second cities, but Morocco has already grabbed some new land and blocked off the Mediterranean. And Nigeria, the next to go for a Pantheon. Also, did California get their bad start thing? They might have done. Sometimes they spawn here. I don't know why. <laughs> They're just walking on water. But yeah, they do move. And also, Cal I swear Sacramento's like up here. But whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, they are settling. I had a little few. I had some nerves, but no, it's fine. The Ottomans have now settled a second city here, right up next to Assyria. These guys do need to get off to a fast start. And Russia have also got a second city just south of Moscow. And now, okay, yeah, now it's starting to happen. The Iroquois and the Sioux as well. There is going to be some very powerful sieves up here as a team. There is not too many in North America. Hopefully the Mayans and the Aztecs focus on going south just to give the Incans and the Brazilians some competition. Although even then, if you controlled all of South America, it doesn't really make you that strong all around. Most literate. Yeah, the team share techs. So there's not too many standout ones, but there's already a gap of four between some of them. Also, although it's some of the ones that I gave bonuses to being on islands, mainly Arabia grabbing a second technology. Very good start. I'm going to try not move around too much towards the end of the processing of the turn because it doesn't like it too much when I do that. For some reason, when Australia is going, it's freezing and there's always a risk there. So we'll try and avoid that. But there we go. The Huns already trying to block off Russia. China. Okay, there's a lot going on. China with the second city. Vietnam pushing towards China. Arabia, I think I just mentioned. Uh, Rhodesia already forward settling Burundi in the Congo. Yeah, there's Australia's turn already hating me. Are you there? Oh yeah, they do like to build roads to each other very early on. So we'll see a lot of that going on. Which might make the game a bit better, because normally they don't build roads, and that's going to make invasions and stuff a little bit more interesting. Japan with a settler. And America have settled Florida. Could we see a strong USA in an AI-only battle? That would be a rare occurrence. We've given them the Iroquois to try and carry them. Uh, Canada doesn't work with this map, I'm afraid, like at all. Not like they don't spawn in the right place, like they don't load in the menu for some reason. I don't know how that works, but... Yeah, they don't actually load in at all. And the Celts, I mean, yeah, I guess you've not got much space to work with. Although, yeah, I mean, England already has a scout over here, so they send settlers elsewhere. Maybe they will grab some of the land in Europe. Spain with two cities. France just chilling at the moment, as is Germany and Austria. Although Austria have a settler now. I wonder if Roman... or oh, Austria's already cut off Rome and Greece. That could be a bad move. Those are two pretty aggressive sieves normally. And who's this? Spain with a pantheon now. Just trying to look around the map. Some areas there's not too many people with two cities. Oh, Rome did just settle here. Sort of Venice kind of location. Obviously I'm, I'm spectating as Venice as I normally do <laughs> all the time. But they're a good sieve to spectate as. Because they don't tend to do that well <laughs> in these games with no city states. And there we go. City number two for Brazil. And the Inca will have one too. Completely messed that up. We'll have one too soon, not Sue Toon. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> How is uh, I was really interested in where Japan. Yep, they're going to send their settlers straight for the mainland. That's going to spice things up a bit. I really want to see Japan just get involved, try and help Korea out. So we'll see Vietnam and China. We'll probably be fighting each other quite early. That would not be a surprise. Aztecs and the Mayans, you got any settlers? Doesn't look like it just yet. We might get a Panama Canal. Fingers crossed. Iroquois already with three cities, which is five between that team on the east coast of America. So, or the Americas. I think that, that's definitely the most between any team, as the Inca make it four for their team. Pretty scary there. But yeah, I think five definitely the most. I mean, no one else has got three cities, so it has to be the most. <laughs> Congo, yet to settle. So, okay, Morocco's settled now. 
we might see some more as the yeah, time passes. There's going to be some weird borders as well. Like these two are probably just going to wrap around each other with constant open borders. Probably pretty likely. Uh, Poland settled another city, Krakow, which will give them access to the Baltic Sea. It might be pretty useful later on. Austria do have a settler. We got the first religion from Mercuria with Eastern Orthodox. Very nice. For them, at least. How are New Zealand and Australia doing? Both at six. New Zealand is sort of looking to explore. they got a settler ready. There's just nowhere to send it just yet. They can't quite cross over. They're just sort of kept at bay for a little while. But as soon as they get that deep sea sailing, which won't take that long, um, yeah, they'll be just free to start colonizing the ocean or the Pacific. Same going for Indonesia and Samoa. Okay, Ooh. oh wow, okay, the Iroquois aren't messing around, city number four, and Arabia with the Temple of Artemis, very nice. Samoa, also, uh, Samoa, the Sioux, about to grab a third city, they need to make sure they keep up. Shoshone haven't done too much, California already building a coastal road. Did Japan, okay, Japan probably about to settle here, it's not the worst space to go, no, that could work for them. In Carthage and Morocco, that team now looking a little bit better. Four cities. Could be interesting to see how well they do. There's, there's not, we've not got much to go by here when we make that pick. I mean, the Iroquois America team looks very strong. I feel like the safest pick, if you want to just try and get some, might be Brazil, Inca. But they're going to have to do a lot to impress us to win. Because obviously, like I said, it's going to have to be subjective this time. No info addicts. I don't think we'll be able to get to one sieve left. My PC is not that good. <laughs> It'll take like 10 years. Um, but there we go. New Zealand, of all people, to grab the Great Library. That's a surprise, but that's a big science boost for these guys who already have a tech advantage. In Australia, don't really need one. They just got it because of New Zealand. <laughs> so maybe that's, a, you know, I would say maybe that's unfair. But I want to see Australia do well. They normally just build up, get really strong, and then don't do anything. So maybe at least this time. They will try and take over the Pacific. Obviously, last time we saw that Samoa was very strong as well when we used them. So it didn't really allow for that. There's not much going on in Europe. Um, but I see Assyria grabbed another city in this area. Very fertile land. Already being utilised. And oh my goodness, Siam are putting pressure on India. We'll see if something happens. Japan, not afraid to get up in Vietnam's face either. That is... Pretty bold. Very bold, in fact. Just <laughs> straight in the middle. Gonna have some messy settling. That is guaranteed. Three now. Yeah, the Sioux trying to keep up. And they'll go for a fourth, too. Whether this America's going through a third. North America already getting very, very busy. Egypt grabbed the second city to help this team in northeast Africa. Looks like Greece is planning a more military route of grabbing some new cities and here we go france with a new one orleans in the north we got austria just south of berlin which of course is fine they're on a team they can work together it doesn't matter it's the combined effort that matters and there we go birmingham settled in normandy is that normandy Brittany? yeah Brittany. i think normandy's over this way Brittany. that's pretty good start for england and the celts i guess Hello, secret unit. What are you doing here? <laughs> Just in case anyone's like, what the heck? Why is there a nuclear submarine? And there we go, Mongolia. Slow start, but two cities now. And a third settler. Ready to push towards the Huns already, by the look of it. But that is going to be it for episode one. As Australia also grab a second city. Let me know down in the comments below who you think is going to win. What team is it going to be? It's time for me to make my pick. And... I really want to pick the Ottomans and Byzantium, but I don't see them winning. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I want to see them do really well, but I don't see them winning. I'm going to go with a surprise, though. I can't, can't make those basic picks when you're running the battle, even though I really want to get one right just once, and I really want to pick Brazil and the Inca. <laughs> I'm going to go for England and the Celts. They've made a good start. Who knows? Maybe they could do it. Their strong cities, which will be these three, will be pretty safe on the island, so anything could happen. 
But yeah, let me know who you think is going to win. Be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to join the Discord server as well. There's a link to that, I think, in the comment section. Uh, comment section in the description. Yeah, be sure to join there as well if you want to discuss the battle in more detail as well and other future stuff that's coming up. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.